purpose. I broke you every day for a year. You broke me? Yes. Still isn't over. Still isn't over. Uh, Alessandra? Their love is so true. We need to start the episode. Just look at the love in her eyes. Hey! What? 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 We have to start the episode? But we're at the best part! Fine. Bye. She's so in love. Unfair. Hi, I'm Alessandra and this is Out of Frame. Ahem. What? Oh, right. <laughs> As I was saying, this is Out of Frame, the show where we give you a close up on some of the most influential media professionals out there. This episode, we're giving you the scoop on the Canadian bred rom com queen, Rachel McAdams. That is so fetch. We'll get there, Buff, but first. Is butter a carb? Buff! <laughs> Sorry. Rachel McAdams was born on November 17, 1978, in London, Ontario, growing up in the small southwestern city of St. Thomas. Some of her earliest performances were as a figure skater when she was just four years old. She competed professionally until she was 18 and believes her training helped her to prepare for her acting. Though funnily enough, she would get stage fright on the ice, but not on stage. Growing up, Rachel performed a lot of Shakespearean plays at theater camp. In high school, McAdams found success in her acting and even received a performance award at the Sears Ontario Drama Festival, a province-wide performance competition for high school students. Her first on-camera role was in 1998 in an episode of The Famous Jet Jackson. She graduated with honors from York University's theater program in 2001. In 2002, her first film was released, an Italian-Canadian project titled My Name is Tonino. Her other early works include The Hot Chick with Rob Schneider and a miniseries titled Slings and Arrows about the backstage adventures of a Shakespearean troupe. But Rachel McAdams' big breakthrough came in 2004 with Mean Girls. She plays probably the most popular version of the evil Queen Bee in recent movie history. Everyone from USA Today to Entertainment Weekly praised her. Delightfully hateful, true comic flair. The character of Regina George would win McAdams' two MTV Movie Awards. Next, Rachel would star in The Notebook opposite eternal man candy Ryan Gosling. A lot of work would be put into creating her character. She spent time in Charleston, South Carolina prior to the start of filming. She studied hard to master that fine southern accent. All of her efforts totally paid off. The Notebook is considered one of the greatest romantic movies of all time. Men and women, boys and girls, people everywhere of all ages, creeds and designs have all cried when they find out that in the end, all along, the old couple was actually Hey, no spoilers. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. But did you know that Rachel and Ryan actually dated in real life? And then they broke up and it was just so sad and it just... They're <sighs> just so cute together. Right? I know. After The Notebook, Rachel switched back to comedy starring opposite Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn in Wedding Crashers. Even critics who hated the movie praised Rachel's work. What could have been a thankless role as the leading lady in a movie about two commitment phobic imposters ended up proving Rachel's ability to bring any role to life. Next comes a change in genre, a little less Ryan Gosling and a little more suspense thriller. She starred in the film Red Eye, directed by Wes Craven. McAdams had more than shown that she was a rising talent worth watching. But after starring in three movies in one year, she'd take a two year long career break starting in 2006. During this break, it's reported that she turned down roles in big blockbuster movies like Casino Royale, Mission Impossible 3, and The Devil Wears Prada. Never one for an extended vacation, McAdams discovered a passion for environmental preservation and co-founded Green is Sexy, a website designed to bring the environment into everyday conversations. Always one to walk the walk, 
Rachel powers their house with renewable energy and never drives when she's living in Toronto. I once spotted her riding her bike near my house. I do so admire her green spirit. After returning to acting through limited release films, she'd revisit the mainstream spotlight with movies like The Time Traveler's Wife and Sherlock Holmes. Next, she channeled her inner mean girl once again, playing opposite Owen Wilson in Woody Allen's fantasy-based romantic comedy, Midnight in Paris. If you're a fan of Paris, revered English literature, and time travel, then this rom-com is worth a watch. Even now, with movies like The Vow, McAdams continues to rule as the queen of great on-screen romances. In fact, it's nearly impossible to think of a great 21st century romantic comedy without thinking of Rachel McAdams. She has the incredible ability to make even the most predictable premise feel brand new. It's undeniable that whether she's pulling our heartstrings or giving us cold sweats as we experience intense flashbacks from high school, Rachel McAdams is a talent to watch out for. That's all well and good, Alessandra, but I think it's about time for Rachel to break out of her shell. I picture a huge blockbuster, maybe directed by Michael Bay. It takes place in... Ancient Egypt! No, no, no! Space! There's aliens, big fighter jets that travel at the speed of light, huge explosions, like an explosion every minute. Rachel's the best space pilot in her fleet, and she has to overcome everyone telling her she'll never be as good as her father. He was the best. Then out of nowhere, she's betrayed by her captain and left for dead. But then her childhood best friend comes to her aid, and even though they don't know it at first, they begin teaching each other how to love. With the power of true love on their side, Rachel finds the courage to- Okay! Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Can you guess the answer to this week's trivia question? Here it is. At which well-known place did Rachel McAdams work part-time? Bonus points if you know what she accidentally broke one day on the job. Write your answers in the comments below or tweet your guesses to at Out of Frame TV. Next week, watch out for our close-up on science fiction king Rod Serling. Till next time, media lovers, I'm Alessandra.